Wuju Miss Sullivan and Dijanakaz, I am here to read chapters 11 and 12. Go grab your book. Chapter 11, Greta. So Captain Cook did not die after all. There were two penguins in the refrigerator, one standing and one sitting on the nest under the ice cubes. They're like two peas, says Mrs. Popper. As two penguins, you mean, answered Mr. Popper. Yes, but which is it? At this moment, the standing penguin jumped out of the icebox, reached inside, and took one of the checkers from under the sitting penguin, whose eyes were closed in sleep, and laid at Mr. Popper's feet. See, Mama, he's thanking me, said Mr. Popper, patting the penguin. At the South Pole, that's the way a penguin shows its friendship. Only it uses a stone instead of a checker. This one must be Captain Cook, and he's trying to show that he's grateful for us getting him Greta and saving his life. Yes, but how are we going to tell them apart? It's very confusing. I'll go down in the cellar and get some white paint and paint their names on their black backs. And he opened the cellar door and started down, nearly tripping when Captain Cook unexpectedly tobogganed down after him. When he came up again, Mr. Popper had a brush and a small paint can in his hands, while Mr. Penguin had a white Captain Hook on his back. <sighs> said Captain Cook, proudly showing his name on his penguin icebox. Ah, said the sitting penguin. Then squirming around in their nest, she turned her back to Mr. Popper. So Mr. Popper sat down on the floor in front of the icebox while Captain Cook watched first with one eye, then the other. What are you going to call her? asked Mrs. Popper. Greta. It's a nice name, said Mrs. Popper, and she seems like a nice bird. But the two of them fill the ice box, and pretty soon there will be eggs. And the next thing you know, the ice box won't be big enough for your penguins. Besides, you haven't done a thing about how I'm going to keep the food cold. I will, my love, promised Mr. Popper. It is already pretty cold for the middle of October, and it will soon be cold enough outside for Captain Cook and Greta. Yes, said Mrs. Popper, but if you keep them outside the house, they might run away. Mama, said Mrs. Popper, you put your food back in the ice box tonight, and we will keep Greta and Captain Cook in the house. Captain Cook will help me move the nest into the other room. Then I will open all the windows and leave them open, and the penguins will be comfortable. They will be comfortable, all right, said Mrs. Popper. But what about us? We can wear our winter overcoats and hats in the house, said Mr. Popper as he got up to go around and open all the windows. It certainly is colder, said Mrs. Popper, sneezing. The next few days were even colder, but Mr. Popper soon got used to sitting around in their overcoats. Greta and Captain Cook always occupied the chairs nearest the windows. One night, quite early in November, there was a blizzard, and the Poppers got up in the morning and there were large drifts of snow all over the house. Mrs. Popper wanted to get her broom and have Mr. Popper bring the snow shovel to clear the drifts away, but the penguins were having so much fun in the snow that Mr. Popper insisted it should be left where it was. In fact, he even went so far to bring an old garden hose up from the basement and sprinkle all the floors at night until the water was an inch deep. By the next morning, all the popper floors were covered with smooth ice, with snowdrifts around the edges near the open windows. Both Greta and Captain Cook were tremendously pleased with all that ice. They would go up on the snowdrift at one end of the living room and run down, one behind the other, onto the ice until they were running too fast to keep their balance. Then they would flop on their stomachs to toboggan across the slippery ice. This amused Bill and Jenny so much, they tried to do it too, on their stomachs of their overcoats. This, in turn, pleased the penguins greatly. Then Mr. Popper moved all the furniture in the living room to one side, so that the penguins and children would have plenty of room for real sliding. It was a little hard at first to move the furniture, because the feet of the chairs had frozen into the ice. Toward the afternoon, the weather got warmer, and the ice began to melt. Now, Papa, said Mrs. Penguin. Popper, you really must do something. We can't go on like this. But Captain Cook and Greta are both fat and sleek, and the children had never been so rosy. It may be very healthy, said Mrs. Popper, as she mopped the floor. It's very untidy. I will do something 
about it tomorrow, said Mrs. Popper. Chapter 12. More Mouths to Feed. So the next day, Mr. Popper called an engineer and a large, had a large freezing paint plant installed in the cellar and took Captain Cook and Greta down where they live. Then two, he had the furnace taken out and moved upstairs into the living room. It looked very odd there, but Mrs. Popper said it was a relief at least not to have to wear their overcoats all the time. Mr. Popper was quite worried what he had found with all these changes that were going on to be very expensive. The refrigerating engineer was worried too when he found out Mr. Popper had practically no money. However, Mr. Popper promised to pay as soon as he could, and the man left him everything on credit. It was a good thing that Mr. Popper got the penguins moved when he did, because Mrs. Popper had been right about the eggs. The rookery had scarcely been moved to the basement when Greta laid the first egg. Three days later, a second one appeared. Since Mr. Popper knew that the penguins only lay two eggs a season, he was astonished when a little while later third egg was found by Greta. Whether the change in climate had changed the penguins' breeding habits, Mr. Popper never knew. But the third day, a new one appeared until there was ten in all. Now penguin eggs were so large that the mother can only sit on two at a time. It created quite a problem. Mr. Popper solved it, however. The disputing the distributing the extra eggs under hot water bottles and electric heating pads kept the butt penguin at penguin body heat. The penguin chicks, when they began to hatch, they were not so handsomely marked as their mother and father. They were fuzzy, droll little creatures who grew tremendously at a tremendous rate. Captain Cook and Greta were very busy at bringing food to them, though of course the poppers all helped too. Mr. Popper, who had always been such a good reader, had no difficulty in thinking of names for the penguin children. They were Nelson, Columbus, Louisa, Jenny, Scott, Magdalena, Adelina, Isabella, Ferdinand, and Victoria. Still, he was rather relieved that there was no more than ten to name. Mrs. Popper, too, thought that this was about enough penguins for anybody, though they really did not make much difference in her housework. As long as Mr. Popper and the children remembered to close the cellar door in the kitchen. The penguins all loved to climb the stairs that led to the kitchen and never knew when to stop unless they found that the kitchen door was closed. Then, of course, they would turn around and toboggan down the steps again. This made rather a curious noise sometimes when Mrs. Popper was working in the kitchen, but she got used to it. And then she got used to so many other strange things this winter. The freezing plant that Mr. Popper had got her for the penguins downstairs was large and a good one. It made very large blocks of ice instead of small ice cubes, so that soon Mr. Popper had made sort of an ice castle down there for 12 penguins to live and climb over. Mr. Popper also dug a large hole in the cellar floor and made a swimming and diving pool for the birds. From time to time, he would throw live fish into the pool for the penguins to dive for. They found this very refreshing because, to tell the truth, they got a little tired of canned shrimps. The live fish were specifically ordered and were brought all the way from the coast in tank cars and glass boxes to 432 Proudfoot Avenue. Unfortunately, they were quite expensive. It was nice that there were so many penguins because when two of them usually Nelson and Columbus, got into a fight and began to spar at each other until their flippers. The ten other penguins would all crowd around to watch the fight and make encouraging remarks. This made it very interesting. Mr. Popper also flooded a part of the cellar floor for an ice rink, and then the penguins <clears throat> often drilled a small drilled in sort of like an army in fantastic marching movements and parades around the ice. The penguin Louisa seemed especially fond of leading these marching drills. It was quite a sight to see them after Mr. Popper had an idea of training Louisa to hold a small American flag in her beak while she proudly led the in the Solomon parades. Janie and Bill would often bring their little friends home from school 
and they would all go down to watch the penguins for hours. At night, instead of sitting and reading a book and smoking his pipe in the living room, as he had done before, Mr. Popper would put on his overcoat and take his little things downstairs. There he would sit and read with his mittens on, looking up from time to time to see what his pets were doing. He often thought about the cold, distant regions in which the little creatures really belonged. Often, too, he thought how different his life had been before the penguins had come to him, kept him occupied. It was January now, and he had already dreaded to think of a time when spring would come and he would have to leave them all day and go back to painting houses. Miigwitch for listening. Keiko Wabaman.